Good morning again to all of you, and many, many thanks to all who helped to plan and support and make worship possible each week. Our deacons, our office staff, our live stream team, and our custodial staff. And thank you to the choir for the beautiful music that enhances and inspires our worship each week. Would you please pray with me? O oh, Holy One, come to us now and touch our spirits through your word for us this day. And O oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! No, of course it is not January 1st, but on this first Sunday of Advent, it is liturgically correct to greet one another by saying, Happy New Year! It's hard to believe, but here we are already on this first Sunday of this first season in this new year of our liturgical calendar. And, as you may already know, the word Advent comes from the Latin term Adventus, which literally means coming or arrival. And furthermore, this word adventus is derived from the biblical Greek term parousia, which refers to the second coming of Christ. So, all of that to say that in our Christian tradition, Advent is understood as a time of anticipation and preparation as we await both the birth of the Christ child and the second coming of Christ. Now, today's lectionary reading is found toward the end of the last chapter in the Gospel of Luke, in the 21st chapter. And our text for this morning is part of the longer apocalyptic discourse in which we hear directly from Jesus who warns the people then of coming persecutions and also foretells the eventual destruction of the temple of Jerusalem. And so, our gospel reading for this morning, this familiar Advent story, is both apocalyptic and this same passage is also regarded as a spiritual teaching when Jesus says, be alert at all times and pray that you may have strength to escape all things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Wow. <laughs> There is a lot going on in our text for today. In just these 12 verses from Luke, we find both prophetic words and instruction to live our lives in the way of Jesus. And so, in this way, our text for this morning offers us what is known as a both-and spiritual truth. Our reading from Luke today is both prophetic and instructional. One of my favorite writers and thinkers is the Quaker educator and social justice activist and renowned author Parker J. Palmer, who wrote the book, The Promise of Paradox, 
and the subtitle is A Celebration of Contradictions in the Christian Life, which was first published back in 1980. Now, in this book, Palmer describes the spiritual practice of adopting what is often referred to as both and thinking. Both and thinking. For many of us, it is so easy and often habitual to view the world around us through an either-or lens, or what is known as binary thinking. Now, this either-or fallacy occurs when we are presented with only two ways of responding to a situation or understanding and relating to the world around us. And the two options or choices at first seem to be mutually exclusive. For example, for example, it is so easy to only see one another as either a Republican or a Democrat. That's certainly one of the primary ways that we tend to label one another these days, isn't it? Not to mention the Green Party and the Libertarians and the Independents. Or, or in the workplace, you may be considered either a professional or a laborer. Or you may have grown up hearing the phrase, you're either with us or against us. And truthfully, it's not always that easy to find the middle ground. And, and one of the most significant examples of binary labeling is that you are either a dog person <laughs> or a cat person. <laughs> now, I do know that many of you here are both. <laughs> and lastly, here in this region of the country, you are either a Buckeye or from that team up north. Speaking of, that was a heartbreaker of a game yesterday afternoon, wasn't it? So, so close. In his book, Parker Palmer writes, the way in which we respond to contradiction is pivotal in our spiritual lives. Let me repeat that again. The way we respond to contradiction is pivotal to our spiritual lives. He goes on to say, Paradox requires a both-and understanding rather than either-or thinking. Paradox is defined as a statement or proposition that seems self-contradictory or absurd, but in reality, paradox expresses a possible truth. Holding space and making room for paradox can be very difficult, especially during these times across our nation today. As you all well know, our country is polarized in many different ways and often reflects that either-or logic. If you're not with us, then you must be against us. Now, I certainly acknowledge and admit how easy it is to fall into this trap of binary thinking. Because after all, we are human, and we all have our hot-button issues and automatic responses. However, however, throughout the years, I have come to understand through spiritual direction and reflection and prayer, and especially through my own personal experience of conflict, that it is possible to find another way or a third way 
of relating to one another, especially with those with whom we have significant political or ideological differences. By acknowledging the gift of paradox in our lives, we are able to discover a broader perspective which recognizes and accepts that two seemingly contradictory truths can coexist. And furthermore, there is rarely one single right answer. The basis of this spiritual practice, which is often just referred to as both and thinking, is that multiple things can be true at the same time and that everyone has a right to their own personal experience regardless of the experience of others. Father Richard Rohr, a Christian mystic and best-selling author, has written extensively about both and thinking and the gift of paradox. Plus, he has a significant online following. Father Rohr teaches that each one of us must learn to live with paradox, or we will not be able to live peacefully or happily even a single day of our lives. In fact, Father Rohr insists that we must learn to even love paradox, or we will never be wise or forgiving or possessing the patience needed in healthy and well-balanced relationships. In recent years, I have learned that even in the corporate world, many business leaders, including my spouse, are finding that this both-and approach and principle offers a powerful insight into the mindset of effective leadership, one that moves beyond false dichotomies and instead embraces the complexity of real life and real world decision making. I'd like to close this morning with one of the best known examples of paradox in scripture, which of course are the Beatitudes. May these words of blessing inspire you and encourage you and uphold you in the coming week. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen.